Kia ora koutou, my name is James Franken, I'm the publisher of uh, New Zealand Geographic. On the tables in front of you, uh, you have some VR headsets, and I invite you all to ignore my long and boring talk, and put on a headset, and swap it between yourselves, and we'll play a short trailer. And with a, a miracle of technology, Annika is going to press one button, and they are all going to be playing at once. All the same thing. So while half of you are ignoring me and the other half are listening, I'll get on with things. It's 360 VR, so you'll need to put some effort in for those of you not moving right now and look around you. You can see above and below and behind you. So I grew up in the Hauraki Gulf, uh, like many of you. This is my grandfather here. This is a place called Silver Bay at the bottom end of Waiheke. I'm the one in the box. I'm taking my work very seriously here, and I remember being dragged up and down that beach many, many times. We had a colony of white-fronted terns around the corner. We had uh, sprats and piper in the shallows. Uh, we had kawai come through the bay that would turn the bay black. Um, we also named all of the biggest stingrays that came into the bay. There was Ray Childs, there was Sugar Ray Leonard, and I remember you could set your watch by the arrival of two o'clock Tony. So we grew up in this environment, and yet our stories of that place pale in comparison to the stories that my grandfather had, or my father had, that just seemed too far-fetched to be true. And now my children grew up in the same place, and my stories today seem far-fetched. The abundance that was there seems gone now. And so that was at the forefront of my mind when I sat down with uh, Pew, now World Wildlife Fund in New Zealand, and Blake Trust to design a public engagement program that might get a bit more cut through. I was also aware that my concern for the Hauraki Gulf came from my experience of it. And not everybody had access to that experience. So the first point that I'll make is that this is not a technology project. This project is about social change at scale. And it uses a very simple trick of behavioural psychology. And that is that as a human, unless you experience something, you can't have empathy for it. Unless you have empathy for something, you won't act on it. You can't just tell people what to do. We've realised that that doesn't work. So our goal, when we set out to begin this NZBR project, was very simple. Well, this is, and that is to give every New Zealander a life-changing experience of our wild places. All of them. So we started out by slating uh, about 25 wild locations or biomes and working our way through it. We have our, had our very first very brave funder, uh, Foundation North, through their gift to the Gulf, contribute to uh, start production in the Hauraki Gulf, the outer Gulf, and the connected waters of the Gulf, being the poor nights. Pāringaringa and all the way up to the Three Kings Islands. They were joined later on uh, by New Zealand On Air that uh, matched that better than dollar for dollar. And we were on our way. We've now covered all of the sites there in red and are working our way onto the sites in green. And in fact, started shooting not just in 360 but in 3D as well uh, with our Taranaki site. We had to build much of the technology ourselves. This is again down at Silver Bay in the workshop. Rather unconventional tool work there. Um, not all of it worked as we had expected. But what it did mean is we could capture uh, world first underwater sequences and topside sequences for that matter. Uh, we worked not only in our unaltered sites but in those sites that are most highly modified by us as New Zealanders. This is up at the Three Kings. 
This is under Lee Wharf. This is uh, out at sea, just outside of the exclusive, outside of the New Zealand territorial boundary with some pilot whales. And they're all the scenes they're seeing in the headsets now. This is, of course, uh, the first at Goat Island, the first marine reserve. So how are we going on this mission? Well, so far, the, uh, we've delivered 160,000 VR experiences over nzgeo.com. We've delivered 670,000 VR experiences over our social networks. And 91,000 VR experiences have been delivered to students in schools. Uh, we have development programs going on now with Marae, Kura, and soon-to-be prisons as well. So I'll invite Annika Andreasen up to explain. Annika's with uh, Blake Trust, who are leading the schools program, and she'll explain a bit more about that. Thank you guys. Uh, so using this amazing VR footage, Blake uh, launched their new um, latest outreach program this year, Blake NZ VR, where we had two environmental educators going to schools all through Auckland, uh, and we had 60 VR headsets where, just like you guys are experiencing today, we put on the students. This year, oh, sorry. Getting, uh, getting used to the heads out of the thing. So this year we're aiming uh, at the end of the year to reach uh, on here 83 schools in Auckland. We're putting headsets on 20,000 students, showing them the footage that you guys have seen, looking at different environments around New Zealand, and then talking to them um, about the different environments that we have in New Zealand. With all the links that uh, we're teaching them is connected to our curriculum through either social studies or science and it directly feeds into it uh, after we deliver the program as well there is teacher resources that follow up both for overfishing and pollution that backs up and helps the teachers link it to the videos that you will see as well as activities and powerpoints um, that assist the teachers these are the sites that we've been focusing on this year, looking at pristine environments up at the Three Kings, heading down looking at some of our marine reserves at the Poor Knights, also looking at Goat Island, and then coming down into the Horiki Gulf, and looking at what's in our backyard. Now for a lot of students, many of them haven't even snorkeled in New Zealand, so this is an awesome experience where they can actually see what we have in our backyard. And then we focus on areas that have been affected by overfishing, explaining what a Kinabaran is, as well as pollution. And pollution not just focusing on plastics, but other sedimentation and other effects that are happening. So our one hour experience that we come into classes, we teach four classes a day. And it's run kind of with having the experience first, showing the trailer video or the show reel that you would have seen today through your VR headset. And then we go through a series of about seven or nine videos, comparing and contrasting these two different locations. Getting students to realize what is healthy, and what is unhealthy and telling us. Now this starts up um, an inquiry of why it is like this, why our environments are like this, and we can start up a discussion of how we are affecting our environments through overfishing, taking out those top predators, as well as uh, pollution, the effects of sedimentation, what this actually looks like underwater, and then a call for action. Okay, so this is the main part that we want to finish on, uh, getting students to think about what are things that they can do to help our oceans building their empathy towards our backyard, and then how we can help play our part in this role. Now looking towards the future, we're hoping to expand our uh, roadshow process by having double the amount of educators as well as VR headsets, and going into the whole of the Auckland region as well as the surrounding um, regions. Then we are looking at, uh, we've been translating our resources into Te Reo Māori, and we are wanting to get a Māori educator to go through the whole of the North Island, talking to all of our kura schools, and getting this uh, resource out there to reach as many people as possible. And finally, also looking at satellite partnerships. So we're talking uh, to, uh, for example, like Christchurch City Council, uh, City Libraries, where we can set up, give them the programs and the resources that we have, as well as the VR set headsets, to get through New Zealand and try to reach as many people as possible through this program. Now, to give you guys an idea that these students are a lot more louder than you guys are, this is a first reaction of the trailer video you guys have just watched in our very first school that we talked to this year. So enjoy.
gives you guys a little bit of an idea. The best part of this is it's taking students beneath the surface and actually seeing what we have in our environment. I've seen students lying on the floor pretending that they're swimming, having them got the headsets on, pointing out stingrays, different types of sharks, dolphins, being able to hear that as well. So through your VR headsets, there is actually little speakers on the side. So you'll get to hear the natural underwater sounds that you'll be able to hear in the water, just like you were diving in that experience. So finishing off in all of our programs that Blake do, we try to, uh, we aim to inspire and educate thinking about uh, kaitiakitanga. Being, having that feeling of being a guardian for the environment. Because for our future, we still want to be able to go out and go and explore, go for a dive, go for a snorkel, see all these marine species, still be able to have seafood as part of our diet. And so these are actions that we um, talk with the students and talk about how they can change, uh, take these ideas home with them so we can make a better future for our ocean. And we'd like to thank all of our sponsors uh, for being able to set this up. It's been a fantastic year and we're looking forward to the future. So thank you very much.